Hi everyone, welcome to B17, the Mighty Eighth Redux. Yes, I know you've been waiting for this a long time. Uh, the guys at Micropro has very kindly given me a very early release version, um, so we can have a quick look and then take to the skies and do a quick mission. Uh, and I'll come to do another video with uh, a little bit more in-depth look at all the things that have changed and been updated. Um, what's worth mentioning straight off the bat is that essentially this is the same game, using the same engine it's just been um it's been enhanced to have um more enticing graphics and brought up to a directx 12 i think it's directx 12 um ability and uh there are a number of additions which have made this game far more friendly for modern systems so from the off screen as you can say welcome to the early access pilots blah blah blah, blah. this is a uh, obviously thank you very much but uh, it's a very early access model at the moment. Ooh, music! Ah, that's new. This game literally has uh, just updated before I've logged in and now I've got music. Didn't have music before. So, <laughs> I'm finding, because this is the development code, it, I'm getting about right four or five updates a day. It's fantastic. So, uh, those of you who played the original game will know this screen very well. It's it's obviously been updated, it's got new graphics, but it's, it's still essentially the same. Um, but, you'll notice it's a beautiful widescreen format, so it fits modern resolutions perfectly. So you've got the load save game or load game there. You've got the um, the intro video, which is currently not available. Uh, options here, and your same kind of options: control menu, realism, load and save, uh, sound options, and graphical menu. What I will just do quickly go in and I'll switch the um, engine volume down to two stars because that's very loud. There we go. Lovely. Right, oh, let's go back. Um, so we'll head into the game proper and then you get your different choices. Exactly the same to the original game. You've got your player bomber campaign of trying to get one crew through 25 missions. You've got your squadron campaign, uh, which is fantastic. You've got to get all 12 um, bombers well, as far as they can and continue to uh, keep the squadron alive. You've got some... Uh, quick start missions, you've got some uh, training missions, and you've got some historical missions, which I've, I've played a few of those on the uh, on the channel. Let's just go into a normal uh, build a bomber campaign, and you get your start date you can choose. So from the 1st of December 43, um, you go to 44. Well, let's start let's start April 44. You can choose your bombardment division, 401st, 306th. 381st and the 92nd. Obviously, it, it, this is what impacts your starting location, so it'll tell you here. Look, so 92nd are based at Poddington Air Base, Ridgewell for the 381st, Thurley for the 306th, and um, Deanthorpe for the 401st. Let's go to Ridgewell and just have a look at the squadron insignia. Let's go for this one. This one looks pretty cool. We'll go for the 533rd. Now we can choose our bomber nose art and name, of course. So they got some default ones setting here, and these will be the default ones you recognize. So Bomb Girl, Ship of the Desert, Hatchet Hannah, Maximum Effort, uh, Bomb Girl 2, uh, The Crew, Old Mother B, Baby Boomer, Feather Merchant, The Ogres, um, Hells are Poppin', Bureau. Or Burrow, uh, Thunder Chief, Froggy, uh, Superstitious Aloysius. Uh, you can see these all been high res graphics up, which is nice. Uh, Bomb Girl 3, Mighty Mouse, uh, Bombshell Blonde, Skunker, Worry Bird, Big Bad Wolf, uh, Woman in Cap, Target for Tonight, and uh, All American. Let's go, um, Woman in Cap. Um, what should we name our bomber? Uh, Oh, I don't know. Let's actually let's just go for Big Bag Wolf, and um, this is a very real nose art, and I can't remember. But Meat Hound, I think. Chow Hound. Was it Chow Hound? Chow Hound, I think, was the. Um, I think that that was it. So we'll we'll just we'll do an honour of Chow Hound, and we'll go with that one. Here we got our crew, and you can rename them however you see fit. You can reset them if you want to change all the photos and stuff up, but that's fine. We'll just go with what we've got. 
and you come to the very familiar uh, um, office building so you've got the squadron commander's office here you've got the squadron commander's operations room where you plan your missions here but as a captain of uh, a bomber we can go into the our office here and you can go outside check out our aircraft and we can have a look at the bomber information file it tells us all we need to know again we've got the first aid if our crew gets injured um, new mail coming in nothing to read at the moment um, but we're a new crew rookie crew so let's head into the briefing room and find out where they want to send us for the first mission welcome to the briefing room and you'll be pleased to see it's populated by the crews of the other bombers who are going to go up today have a look at the mission brief so 1st of April 1944 primary target Brest Harbour secondary target Brest U-boat base tertiary target none selected ordnance selected will be six times 500 pound general purpose 12 times 100 pounds in centuries and distance to the farm of this target will be 834 miles fighter escort will be two squadrons of p-47s and we get the lowdown on the primary target so flak strength is moderate fighter strength is minimal priority is high the u-boat base flak is moderate fighter strength is minimal priority is medium and no tertiary target selected so we'll sign away our life we can have a look at the reconnaissance film so you can see the coastline coming along here bit of light flag and there's the port there looks like a large merchant ship in dock and oh possibly a light cruiser or something in the middle another couple of cargo ships but we'll try and aim for the um, cargo warehouses on the, uh, the left hand side of the shore there have a look at the route we're going to be flying and this will all be very familiar to those who've played the previous game so we'll be flying south just skirting around the Luftwaffe's defences here um, and then coming in for the raids against the uh, the port and the U-boat uh, base and then heading back out and uh, back to our home base here which is Ridgewell um, between Colchester and Cambridge really south of Bury St Edmunds so with that all sorted let's head to the uh, the if you can behind this guy here is the door let's head to the uh, the airfield and to the bomber is when we come inside look at this here's the pilots and the co-pilot just going through the startup checks getting the engines fired up and we can go through we've got the usual controls here so we can go to the nose section we've got the bombardier here Paul Whiteley just sort of Go reading through his notes and getting prepared. We've got the navigator here just checking over the, the, the maps and make sure all his instruments are ready to go. Uh, then we come into the bomb bay and you can see the bomb load we've got. And there's the uh, 100 pound incendiaries and these are the uh, what they, were they 250s or 500s? I can't remember. Um, but there they are loaded at the bottom. Moving into the radio room. It's looking gorgeous, isn't it? Nice sharp visuals. Uh, radio guys just going through his usual startup checklist. Oh, and a bit of a stretch as well. Why not? Uh, in the midsections, we've got the two waste gunners and we've got the bull turret gunner. Bull turret gunner can probably. Um... Taxi to runway. Oh, yeah. Let's just let's stick him on the uh, the cheat gun to begin with. Um, we don't want him in the bull turret when we're doing the landing oh, and taking off just in case something happens and he gets squished under there. So we'll just move him in, into the uh, no section for takeoff. And at the back, we've got our dear old tail gunner, tail end Charlie, who's going to keep us safe. You are cleared for takeoff. And it's seven o'clock high. Right, we're on the tail gun. 
You can see it feels very enclosed this time, doesn't it? We've modelled the fall. We've obviously strayed a little bit too far to the east. I don't see him. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Now, one thing I have noticed early access, the actual um, the gun sight for the, the, the rear gun is slightly off. You aim just above the um, targeting circle. That's where the traces go. Uh, so, yeah, obviously it's just, it looks like it's being knocked by the ground crew. But, um, yeah, we use the top bar and that gives us a rough... Oh, we're gunning these down. One coming in there. Good hits, good hits, good hits. On the ball turret. I think he's gone down. Can't see him. So yes, yeah, so you got swishy new graphics for the turrets as well. See the tail. You've got the the where the waypoint. Um, yeah, you got the um, the actual the bulk of the the tail section as well. Just need to fix the uh, gun sight on that. Full turret gun here. Top turret gunner. Making a change. I don't know if we've got any. Um, or en enemy fighters, but uh, yeah, and these are the, the gunners. Top turret gunner. So you feel very much more enclosed, don't you, than you did on the, the previous game, the way the uh, the gun sight is and everything like that. When it comes to the waste guns, they're pretty much the same, as you'd expect. 50 cal sticking out the side of the, um, the rear of the aircraft. One big improvement is the cheek gun. Look at that, you've got so much better visibility and bigger windows than we can see. Now, one thing I'm sure you'll all be wanting to know, that is me controlling the turret with the mouse. Yes, I do have it used for the joystick because I find it the response a bit better for me, but yes, it is now mouse controllable for those of you who want that option, so that is going to be a big plus for many of you. And then we can head on to the chin turret. Pretty similar to how it was in the original game. There we go. Not waste too much ammo. Uh, you can you press I and you get the information. In this case, it's the uh, the ammo we have left, um, which is all good. And obviously, all the different um, stations have different secondary and uh, secondary views and functions as well. So, for example, the the um, come back into the compartment view we can get the ball to switch over to um, the northern bomb site as you would expect and then when we're there's the northern bomb site obviously we're not near the target at the moment but we also have the information we can um, have a look at this we've got the drift meter here which we can set um, we can then have a look at the actual the uh, the bomb bay console itself where we can choose to drop the timing of the bombs and open the bomb bay doors and select the racks and all that kind of good stuff as well and actually flick the switch to drop the bombs there and switch the bomb site on so yeah these are all here and uh, all good we've got the fuel transfer valves in the upper turret as well for the engineer so yeah all the good stuff with the navigator again we've got the um, the drift calculation you get this sorted this this sets the uh, the the drift so it helps with navigation but also bomb aiming and we can look out the window and uh, see engines one and two spinning away gives ourselves a little bit of reassurance as well okay no weather reports available today it would seem so we are heading towards the target it's a bit of a cloud over the area which may pose a bit of a problem About to start the bomb run, I think. So I think it's over here the target. It was over here. I can't quite remember. But um, yeah. Okay, here we are. 
on the bomb run and have a look out the plexiglass window yeah it is literally sitting under that big chunk of cloud which is not very helpful at all we just let the bomb has settled down a bit I'm wondering if there was no bomb that's a weather report because uh, the target and the um, secondary target are so close together right I'm thinking I can see this is it this is the target here isn't it so let's um, take manual control Start bringing the aircraft towards there. Set the bomb sight on that if we can. And then we'll try and uh, find control it in. Got a long way to go yet. Uh, we'll spot, probably expect to see the uh, anti aircraft fire or the flak boxes being fired up soon. There we go, the first puffs of flak. Seem to have our level, but it should be relatively light, didn't they say? Moderate to light. So uh, we've got to fly through it anyway. Um, maybe a slight correction. Let's try and target about there. Not coming in at the best angle, to be fair. Oh, that was loud. Clouds can be a bit of a pain, but we can still make out the big the jetties and the key side, so that should be okay. We've got a bit of drift going on here, so let's aim just to the side of that large grey warehouse. Just keep tweaking it a little bit. Wind seems to be fairly calm, or we got that set right. Just in the drift a little bit to the left. How long is this cloud going to last? Oh. I look up just as the the second flak box is being formed. Look at that. You can see what I mean by the flak box now. See, is it better to go for this side here or that side there? I'm thinking maybe that side there. Let's, um, let's... I bought that and try and stick them onto the edge of this, uh... Oh, there's, there's hangers there as well. Let's try and stick it right in the middle then. Now we're being jostled all over the place. Too much correction into that. We're now. There we go. That's looking good. Yeah, that is a cruiser, isn't it? On the jetty. We're here to bomb the facility, not necessarily the ships. Looking good. bit of drift coming in at the end. Bombs away. Here we are, here's the port. There's the uh, friendlies going over. Yeah, it was, look. It's a, it's a cruiser. Nice. Anyway, we were bombing for about here, but we got a bit of drift right at the end, so let's see where these uh, these bombs go. I'll maybe zoom out a bit, because maybe I'm a little bit too optimistic. Oh, no, no. we got the big warehouse. Sounds like some landed in. Oh, they landed in, the, in that in these water areas here. So we got the um, the large warehouses and the buildings over here, and uh, a substantial bit of residential housing as well. Unfortunately, but um, yeah, we did hit the target, which is something. Back to it. You can see the flak is uh, is in full swing. Well, somebody with a smoky engine down there. Well, that's looking a little bit rough over there, but 
don't think that's we seem to have come through that with only a oh, bit of damage here to the wing tip but uh, apart from that we seem to have got away with that quite lightly right all that's left is a turn north and we'll head back to Blighty we can see over there a bit more flak we got a bit more smoky engine Let's see if we can just divert a little bit of this. Let's some um, descend a thousand. Try and get under it as best we can. The worst away from our aircraft. Well, we've got a few holes in him up there, isn't he? But you can see through the clouds the burning target area. Successful mission. If we can get just get these aircraft home, I think that is that the last of the flak. Possibly. Possibly. Who knows? Coming to the coast now, though. At 11.47. Ooh, the aircraft over there just seems a little bit unstable, doesn't she? Um, passing over Southampton, back over British soil, and heading on up there to um, home base. With the little friends diving away, they've done their job so they're going to go low and um, make their way back on their own Welcome to debriefing then, let's have a look at how we did so the 1st of April 1944 Brest Harbour was attacked. Distance flown, zero. <laughs> that's a bug from the original game. So that's interesting. So uh, that'll obviously, I'll, I'll maybe highlight that so they get that fixed. Um, but yeah, that is a bug that was on the original game. So obviously it's still there at the moment as they're still doing um, probably other parts of the, the upgrade uh, to the game, which is more pressing at the moment. We lost one bomber. I didn't see it go down. Must have been shot down by the flak. Enemy fighters shot down four. Bomb damage estimate low. Oh, that's a bit mean, isn't it? I thought that wasn't too bad. There's the bomb strikes and took out the hangars, and obviously that's when it went off into the uh, into the residential zone, which is not good. But there we go. Um, so, oh, I just read the thing. So medals awarded. Staff Sergeant Mercer got a bronze star. Uh, missing crews accounted for Memphis Bell crashed in friendly territory that is the one who was slightly high and to our starboard side I think uh, they've probably lost control while they're coming into land that's why I didn't see it because it's crashed in friendly territory so yeah unfortunately they were all lost within sight of the airfield happened quite a lot so first mission down Let's uh, read the reports. Um, can have a look. Paul Whiteley, our um, bombardier. Um, he's looking. Everyone, I think everyone's looking okay. Let's actually have a look to see who shot down the aircraft. Who got credited with them? Um, we didn't get any of those aircraft. The other air airplane shot them down. Oh, that's disappointing. So, what did he get his bronze star for then? Mercer, 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 Mercer. Tail gunner. He got a bronze, our tail gunner got a bronze star, but we didn't shoot down any aircraft. Maybe he damaged them all, but didn't get the final accreditation. Otherwise, I can't quite work out how that's all come to pass. But, yeah, our bomber has completed its first mission. Uh, everyone is looking quite happy about it. Yeah, I love the updated photos. I did, uh, there was a charm to the old pixel art as well but yeah the nice photos are quite good as well kind of makes it a little bit more I don't know, brings it home a little bit more doesn't it but there we go that was our first mission in b17 the mighty eighth redux uh as you can say we're back to the aluminium skins of the original um but yeah first mission complete no losses need to have a word with the uh grand crew about the sticky undercarriage but apart from that not too bad at all so we'll probably pick this up again going forward. For an early development code, it's looking pretty good. Once they optimize it and uh, do all the little tweaks, I think this is going to be 
just what we wanted. It's the it's the old game, but just enhanced with uh, nicer visuals and some, you know, greater load distances for the terrain when you're bombing, which makes it such uh, an improvement. You know, you don't you're not waiting for a block of landscape to load in. It's there, so you can get a better visualization of where you're where you're looking and where your target is most likely to be. Yes, a few tweaks needed, still some work, loads of work going on on developing, but um, it's all going in the right direction, which I'm pleased to say. Thanks so much for watching, hope you enjoyed this, take care and I'll see you very soon, bye bye.